Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and I'm going to bring to your attention a couple of tough built levels. Now, a lot of times on my channel, I really like to bring out something that's more innovative than just an also-ran, and tough built has kind of delivered in sort of a unique space that I had to take a step back and decide, is that a good thing? And yeah, the more I use it, the more I realize it is. So here's the issue. I've got a small level. This is nine uh, inches end to end, which if you compare that, say, to a Klein, kind of a larger torpedo, this is actually larger, this little torpedo level. But watch this. This slides out, making this over 15 inches in actual length. And yeah, I know, I thought, moving parts on a level, that's like asking for trouble. Well, the more I use it, the more I realize, first of all, we're dealing with bubbles, not actual degrees. So I did compare it to trying to use uh, physical degrees to see where we were at. But also um, that in fact, a lot of times I carry around a small level. In fact, sometimes a very small level. I really like this little Stabila here. Uh, much better than the previous version that wasn't very, my very magnetic. But anyway, I end up carrying a smaller level, but I really wish I had something a little bit bigger. Now, by sliding out, sure, there's a the risk that this, the, the amount of play, which physically has to be there, might be at the molecular level, but, you know, it definitely is there, doesn't really make much of a difference when you're dealing with bubbles. Um, and I measured this out. I, what I actually did is, is lined it up, used a wedge, figured out exactly where zero is. Um, as you can see here, tried to line this up and then I, I kind of calibrated it. It's easier coming out than sliding that back. But anyway, I dropped it down. I've got, there's zero as you can see, or 0.1, let me back it off. And I, I basically took a close look at what this bubble was doing at zero and then actually started ramping up till I hit, you know, one of the three lines. To one, it was basically 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and then one degree on that full uh, third line. So I kind of calibrated a bubble level. And I thought, you know, most of the time you're just eyeballing it. It's really close where you're within a degree. I mean, within a, a tenth of a degree or maybe two tenths of a degree. And that's plenty with a bubble level. So then when I did the tests extending it, it was exactly the same. So this increases actually your leverage, you know, your, your change in the bubble, because the bubble's way over here. There's a giant angle there. And in fact, I didn't find much of a difference at all, which means what you would use this for is essentially unaffected by whether it's in its compact position or its extended position, even though, yeah, technically you've got a moving part in the level. Now they also ramped it up uh, with a larger version. This is a 24 inch to 40 inch extending box level. And this one, they actually put a lock on and that's important be, you know, simply because oftentimes you grab the level maybe by the end and you don't want it flying off. So I can uh, have this in a locked position or I can lock it like that. So it's in the unlocked. I can slide it out and you can see. Now you might think, why is the 40 there? That's because that's an indication of where this edge is. So as this slides in, this now, that's a 30 inch level right there, all the way through. Now these aren't light levels. There, there's some stout mass to these things. Um, I, I do like a light level. This is, is one of my lightest here. This is an old, it's a Sears level. It's not even a Craftsman, but it is USA made. Uh, I think it's like fiberglass or something. I have used this thing for decades. Um, it's, it's handiness is in its lightweight. And here's the thing. I, I wanted this because it was very light and it doesn't really fit in a toolbox. So I didn't want to have something that you know, it was going to stress the box if I just kind of stuck it in sideways or whatever. These, on the other hand, are pretty heavy, you know, given the size, 
comparing them to a, actually it's like two of these maybe, two of these Klein, this particular Klein, but I have a bunch of different levels there. Um, so there's there's some mass here. It's very wide. In fact, if we take a look at it, I'm going to use my tough built tape. I keep using this because they've also got some tapes I'm taking a look at. Um, so I run this out and what you're looking at is about an inch and three eighths. You can see it because they've included the actual fraction near the bottom. So that's a fairly wide level. I think that's great. So solid level extends. I've got my, um, my double bubbles. Notice this is also curved. This is kind of interesting. At first I thought, what does that actually do physics wise? I think by curving it, you can probably get a better calibration because you're not just dealing with a, you know, a, a perfect horizontal. You're dealing with something where there is actually, you know, kind of better calibration potential. I mean, you could do it on the flats, but a lot of times the flat, it really flies back and forth. By curving it, they seem to slow it down, um, you know, because it, it takes more. So the, that's why the difference between what I had here I had 0.3 degrees when the bubble hit the first, right about, try to line that up, right about there. That was like 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and one full degree there. So there is some calibration capabilities when you're not dealing with a straight bubble. And then it's got, you know, the, the other bubble. That one is straight. So I don't know what these are going to sell for just yet. I know they're going to be offered soon. Um, both online and through retail outlets. I am impressed with this. This one, this is a big level. It's heavy. It's Look at the size of this thing. I'm going to grab my tape measure again and show you what that that's looking like. How wide that thing is. What do we got here? One and five eighths inches, something like that. That is a beefy, thick level. And with the extension going out to 40 inches. So not only does it have the capability of a toolbox size level, or maybe this one you might if you've got a small toolbox, but you can also extend it out to uh, span gaps, and that's often important. Usually I carry a larger level, you know, like my Stabila here. Um, this one's a 48 inch, and this is, you know, handy, but it's also very long, so it takes a bit. By the way, uh, there is another level that Tough Build has, a masonry level, and I haven't done some of the projects yet, but basically, if you look at this, I've got a 48 inch heavy duty masonry level, similar form factor. This one does not extend, but it's a beefy level. Um, so I'll be doing a review later when I actually get to do some projects with this. But Tough Build is going after the level community. You know, and, and they're raising the bar there, and the bar slides. So I think this is kind of a neat idea. Um, the more I use it, the more I, I think the advantage is wildly more than any disadvantage with a possible weakness in the, the movement of a sliding rod inside a level. Um, so anyway, I wanted to bring those to your attention. They're going to be released soon. Um, I think uh, Tough Built's just nailing it as far as trying different things, trying to answer questions we have or provide solutions beyond our usual um, levels that we've got that haven't changed much, probably since we built pyramids. And with that, Doc out.